Hey you guys, it's Moonlander back with another horror movie review. And today we're going to be looking at a Canadian movie I rented at Amazon in the new releases section of horror for $1.99 on standard definition called Residue. <laughs> Just remember, all this shit started the moment you opened that book. So this movie is written and directed by a Rusty Nixon. And his previous movie is called Candyland. Which I guess is supposed to be a pretty weird one, but I've never seen it. So Residue's about a private investigator who's making ends meet by doing jobs for a crime lord. And he eventually gets hired to deliver a package to a guy and he needs to make sure that this guy opens this package himself. How did this all start? I guess you need to know how I ended up with the book. Mr. Luke Harding. My partners and I have a little test. Our friend Gary Hung has passed this test, so now we need to deliver to him his prize. Now on his way to deliver this package, he gets attacked by another crime lord's henchman. And the package ends up shielding him from a bullet. And he decides to go back to his apartment and open this package and see what's in it. This is Gary himself has to be the one who opens it. Did you by chance open the book? So when he opens this package up, it's an old and mysterious looking book that seeps some kind of strange fluid from it. And he starts reading it, and it's a journal of some explorer that was exploring in the jungle somewhere. And he found some sort of strange and evil creature. When he continues reading this book, it begins consuming his life. And soon after he starts the book, he's contacted by his estranged daughter who wants to come and live with him. And he agrees to let her live there. Now the crime lord that was trying to steal this book learns that he's started reading it. And instead of taking it from him, he decides to let this guy keep reading the book and as his henchmen spy on him as he's doing so. So as he continues through the book, things start getting worse. He starts hallucinating, he loses track of time, and he has memory loss. And he's also contacted by his former crime lord boss, who is now missing his head. Okay, so the things I liked about this movie is I thought it was overall a cool concept. It kind of reminded me of John Dies at the End and a little bit of The House of Leaves. And I think this movie tried to go in a lot of good directions. Um, as he's reading the book, the evil starts to affect just not only himself and in his apartment, uh, it also starts affecting people in the apartment complex and affecting the henchmen that are spying on him. And even at one point, the daughter happens to read a little of the book, so she also gets involved with this thing. So. Uh, I think they tried to uh, add some interesting subplots to this story. But unfortunately, while they are good directions to go in, none of them really succeed all that well. well I mean, they're well-intentioned, but um, they lack a little polish, I think. And I would imagine it had to do with budget constraints. And another thing I didn't really like about this movie is I didn't like really the casting for this. And I mean that probably has to do with the budget as well. But the one crime lord 
played by Matt Fuhrer. I can't stand that guy. I think there's probably several movies I've avoided watching just because he was in them alone. And I don't know what it is. I just don't like the roles he plays. I just don't like him. He just feels the same in every movie and he just seems really unlikable. <laughs> and I guess the other thing that sticks out in my mind is the father and daughter uh, roles I thought were really weird. Um, it almost felt like there was sexual tension between them at certain parts and I don't know maybe that was a off-screen thing that just happened to uh, come through in the movie but uh, there was one really odd scene where the dad's like wearing a wife beater and he's got his arms up and He's like, oh, you gonna wear a bra or something? <laughs> it was really weird. So, okay, so my final thoughts on this movie is where it does fail in some areas. It's still a fun and weird movie to watch. And I would suggest watching it, especially if you're a fan of, like, John Dies at the End. Um, and I'll give this movie a 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you on the next one.